15 years, which is, I mean, like ancient in internet uh, age, um, they've grown to cover pretty much every condition. And what's interesting about MedHealth, though, is it's not just a consumer um, uh, community, but they have invited in the medical community, the healthcare professionals, to answer questions. And here's the sort of symbiotic relationship that they created with academic medical centers. So academic medical centers are interested in getting referrals, right? And so this is a creative PR opportunity for them where they offer their top doctors to med help to answer patient questions, not to treat them. I mean, they don't prescribe medicine. They don't tell them, please, you know, Mrs. Smith, change your basics, blah, blah, blah. But they help guide them towards the information that's relevant for them that only a human can really do through interacting online. And, and so they're giving them all this free access to top doctors. And the way the hospitals justify it is that if there is someone in that community who has a rare cancer, or some need to be um, transferred to a, a specialty care you know, center, they're probably going to think well of the academic center that's been helping them all along on MedHelp and are more likely to go there. And if they get one referral, that ends up you know, being worthwhile for the year of the doctor's time in the, some cases. And, so. and there's been a lot of talk in the medical blogosphere and, 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 and in general and thinking about how do we how do we identify sites with trustworthy information? Because it's sort of like you know Michael Spector said last night, when, when you're trying to identify what is the right answer in science, you have to ask a lot of people. You have to sort of, there, there is no, you know, there's no, um, uh, there's no machine that can do that for you. And it, there's a number of systems that have been tried out, most of which, you know, many of which have, have limitations. But um, we haven't answered that question yet. You know, I, I think one of the ways we're trying to do it is just by creating more and more good content. Um, well, I heard two years ago when I came to Science Online, someone said, "Well, wait, there's a real need for an accreditation." Yeah, and that's that's yeah, and that's been a hard thing specifically yeah. in the medical blogging. Yeah, you know, where where if you really have want people to know that you're a credible MD, not a you know, well, somebody who's posing as one or whatever. That you could get the stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. I helped to write that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Great. But again, we don't have money for PR and marketing and stuff. So it's sort of like people haven't necessarily all figured out that it exists. Maybe I've done a bad job of promoting it. I'm well, not sure. I've been I've been negligent too because I should be. Yeah, we we should probably. Yeah. We need to we talk. Should, we all should talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, 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 there, there's there's two systems. I mean, there's one system called the uh, uh, Oncode, which yeah. is which is an international system for trying to recognize, and it, it, nothing can say, if nothing can say about a site, the health information on this site is great, because it, you'd have to always, but yeah. it can say that the health information is presented transparently, and that it appears that, you know, it, it's, um, what, and, and, and there's a whole lot of limitations. It's not really good for the blogosphere, because they want you to control the comment of the commenters, the content, you know. Yeah. Now, the, the healthcare, the code of ethics, blogger code of ethics, was specifically designed for bloggers and, and the people who are on the ground floor, this did some terrific work because I was watching the whole time. And, you know, yeah, um, and uh, and and they specifically laid out some ethical principles that if people want to wear this badge, they will abide by. And I'll read it in case you can't see it. Clear representation of perspective. So another, a lot of things in ethics are about transparency, right? And readers must understand the training and overall perspective of the author of the blog, which goes a long way. If it, you know, if you say, well. I'm actually just some dude who's done a lot of reading. It, it means something different than I have a, an MD, PhD in immunology, and then when you write about you know uh, microbiology, but your MD, PhD is in immunology, it gives you it, it lets you evaluate the source. Um, confidentiality. We do not violate HIPAA. That's really simple. I mean, it's a simple statement to say if you understand HIPAA. Um, <laughs> and 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 but but it, it it puts it out there. It says that you know it. it it's based in a very simple way. It doesn't say specifics, but in general way, it says, you know, you, you, for instance, you write me and tell me that you've got toenail fungus. I'm not going to put it out there on my blog. Um, commercial disclosures, nothing could be more important, almost. Advertising clearly labeled, paid endorsements disclosed, conflict of interest of authors. I mean, this is, uh, these are the things, when you get these emails from people saying, my name is Nick. I represent MD Info, the third largest global health website. We currently, you know, um, I'm looking at it right here. The um, uh, he's not disclosing. He's telling me uh, something about a website, but he's not saying what his goals are. He's not saying what his conflict of interest is. He's, you know, uh, is that a question or a stretch? Oh, um, yeah. Sorry, I was uh, I was just thinking. Um, well, you know what? You, you should <coughs> what you were saying. 
thing because uh, I was going back to um, when you were talking about whether or not you'd, uh, you'd say like I got a lot of X case recently. Yeah. Um, well, okay. What what if uh, you did something along the lines of if you ha if you did actually get the case somewhat commonly? Yeah. Then say you reach some sort of critical mass of numbers yeah. that you want to present. Then maybe you you'd attempt to randomize from the last case um, the amount of the amount of time delay you'd have until. You talked about that. This is, this, is, this is a tough, this is, a, I mean, temporal relationships are one of the ways you can anonymize a case. Um, so I, I will, uh, I posted something the other day which, which I thought better of and I took down. And, and it was because it was something about a case but nothing specific. But that I could tell from the comments that they understood or assumed 